Hey everyone, how's it going? I have yet another haul for you all. Uh, I have been acquiring books at a frightening rate this year. I just think... I, I started the year wanting to continue to restrict my buying to a degree. I wanted to limit the number of books that I bought to half the number of books that I read. And so at, at the beginning of the year I had this whole system worked out where I had an Excel sheet where I kept track of this stuff but that has all just fallen apart, I think. I've actually lost count now of how many books that I bought, so there's no way I'm going to be able to meet that goal. And the thing is, is that I just have some amazing thrift stores near me that have just incredible turnover. I don't know... Well, I, I do sort of know what why it is. I think it's probably because this is a college town, and so there are students who will get rid of books, there are perhaps professors who will get rid of books, and so the thrift stores just turn out gems, you know? A lot of the times we expect thrift stores to ha have basically nothing but garbage, right? You know, to have just a bunch of, like, Janet Ivanovich or uh, James Patterson or Ted Bell or something, you know, these authors who write books that might be entertaining but aren't any anything that's super interesting to someone like me. Uh, and, but that is not true of the thrift stores here. So I have some books that I picked up from thrift stores. I just like visiting thrift stores every now and then. Uh, and I also have another haul from a local independent bookstore. I, on Friday, this past Friday, I needed some retail therapy for uh, a reason that I won't go in depth on. It's not anything monumental, but I just needed to unwind. And I realized that it was open for the first time in a long time. It had not been open for browsing for over a year due to the pandemic. And even now, they only open for a limited time each week, and they limit the number of people who can enter to three, and they require you to like wear a mask, and they actually check that you're wearing the mask correctly, which I kind of like. Uh, so, you know, but they, 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 so it's safe, but they were open, and I was so delighted that they were open. It's a shop in Boone, Iowa, called The Bookshop Incorporated. I'll try to impose a picture up here. Uh, it's a really lovely little used bookstore. I really like the people who work there. They're, you know, really nice, bookish people. Uh, and, um, yeah, so I stopped there for some retail therapy on Friday, and I found some very Lukash books. So, uh, I will start, uh, with those. And the first of those is uh, this, a Penguin classic. This is one of those old uh, Penguin uh, paperbacks, uh, The Cossacks by Leo Tolstoy. This includes The Cossacks as well as The Death of Ivan Ilyich and Happy Ever After. Uh, and I have read The Death of Ivan Ilyich and I love it. And this, I believe, is a different translation from the one that I've read. Uh, this translation is by Rosemary Edmonds. So I can reread The Death of Ivan Ilyich in a new translation. And I can read The Cossacks, which is a a novella by Tolstoy that I am intensely interested uh, because I, it is about, you know, the Cossacks, uh, who I am interested in. So, yeah, and I'm also just really eager to read as much as I can by Tolstoy. So I was really excited to find that. Uh, then I have another classic. This is uh, Cicero on The Good Life. Uh, this is the kind of work of ancient philosophy that I just gobble up like candy. I know a lot of people poo-poo this sort of thing, but I... I just love stuff like this, you know, like the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius and the stuff that Plato wrote. Uh, not so much the stuff that Aristotle wrote, but yeah, this is the kind of thing that I just love. Uh, the the title does it is pretty self-explanatory. It also has some other works in it about religion and about the gods, uh, and uh, I think that should be interesting. The gods of ancient Rome, obviously, and I think that that should be cool. Uh, and then. Uh, we're turning to Russia for the next one. This is Anton Chekhov, uh, Ward Number 6 and Other Stories. I have only read one play by Anton Chekhov. I read The Cherry Orchard, and I really liked it. And I have one other play by him on my shelf, which I believe is uh, Three Sisters, but I have not read any of, of his short stories. And Ward Number 6 I am particularly interested in because it's actually referenced in my second favorite film of all time, uh, Mirror, directed by Andrei Tarkovsky. Uh, in the first, like, ten minutes or so of that movie, uh, the, at, Ward Number 6 by Chekhov is referenced by one of the characters. So I'm 
certainly certainly want to read that. And uh, yeah, and it's just I think this will be a nice gateway into Chekhov's short stories. You know, he's supposed to be one of the greatest short story writers ever. And I do love these Oxford World Classics editions. They have they tend to have really nice introductions and notes and I really also really like the covers that they find. I, I do like this cover. Uh, very, very Russian I think. Um, and then uh, two American classics next. The first one is one I was probably the find of the day for me in this in this hall when I was at that, uh, at that store. This is a modern library hardcover of the selected writings of Herman Melville and so this has his complete short stories. Uh, so you have like Bartleby the Scrivener, The Encantadas or Enchanted Isles, uh, Cock-a-doodle-doo, uh, you know, and then you also have Typee, a novella, uh, you have Billy Budd, uh, you have Benito Sereno, uh, so yeah, a lot of his shorter works, which I am intensely interested in reading since I reread Moby Dick earlier this year, and it just, Moby Dick just blew my mind on a second read and made me realize that I just want to experience as much of this author's work as I can. And this seems to be most of his shorter fiction. So that's great. I, I love, and I love these Modern Library editions. They have, one thing I love about them is that the margins are extremely generous. Uh, really wide margins. I really love books with a lot of white space uh, because it makes the book feel like it's going by more quickly than it usually is for me since I'm a slow reader. So I was delighted to find that. And then uh, O Pioneers by Willa Cather. Uh, this is uh, the only book in a trilogy that she wrote that I have that that I want to read. So she wrote uh, a sort of loose trilogy. The, the I believe it's called the Prairie Trilogy or the Plains Trilogy. The Plains Trilogy is what it's called. And I read the first one of those, uh, The Song of the Lark, and I own the other one, which I believe is My Antonia, and then this is the third one that I don't own. So, And it's in a Reader's Digest edition, so it's it's a really nice hardcover. I think it, I think Olive from a book Olive uh, collects these editions, um, and uh, yeah, I can definitely see why. Yeah, they are, they are beautiful. Um, so anyway, so that's another Willa Cather to add to my collection. And then finally, I was really excited to find this one. This is a work of history. This is Persian Fire by Tom Holland, which is uh, a history of the conflict between the Persian Empire and the Greek city-states. And so it roughly covers the same terrain as Herodotus does in his histories. And uh, I, I read Herodotus last year and loved the histories so much. And so this seems like a really natural follow-up, you know, a modern, a modern history, including, you know, modern discoveries and modern scholarship. So, yeah, a great find. And uh, this also uh, was recommended highly by uh, Jack from The Rambling Raconteur. And uh, J Jason Harrigan from uh, Black Sheep Books now is the name of his channel. Uh, he also told me that this is really good. And, uh, yeah, so I th this actually might be the find of the day. Actually, even more than the Melville, which is saying a lot because the Melville was quite a find. But, uh, yeah, so Persian Fire. And then uh, the next ones I have here are, are all just uh, thrift store finds. Uh, so, uh, yeah, th these are just things I bought for, you know, a buck each. Uh, so the first one are two books by the same author. And this was my first time encountering the author, but I was really intrigued by the titles uh, that I found, so I snatched them both up. So this is uh, The Balkan Express by Slavenka Darkulic, and this is How We Survived Communism and Even Laughed. Uh, and, yeah, so these are kind of about... Co collections of essays about communism, specifically communism in Yugoslavia. And that is an area of Europe that I don't know all that much about and I wish I knew more about. There are a couple of books that I have read by authors from that area. I have read uh, The Bridge on the Drina by Ivo Andrich, and I read a couple of books by Danilo Kish, who I believe was Serbian, um, and uh, Ivo Andrich I believe was also Serbian, and uh, Slavica and Draculic, I actually don't know which of the uh, Balkan countries she's from, but anyway, these are books about communism in the Balkans, and that should be insane. And I th actually, I think this one is about the ethnic cleansing that took place in, uh, in, in the former Yugoslavia in the 90s, uh, and th again, that should be 
uh, heart, and that should be harrowing reading, but fascinating. So, anyway, yeah. So, I grabbed those two books, and then I found a book that is decidedly outside of my wheelhouse, but which I have heard great things about. This is The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster, a children's book with a really lovely illustrations, it looks like. Um, yeah, if I can find a few more for you. If you can see that, I never know. If, I never know if you can see things uh, with this camera because I don't. I don't. I can't look at myself on here, so it might be blurry. But uh, yeah, I've just heard great things about this, so I snagged it because it was for a dollar. And I, you know, I, I always think that there will come a time in my life when I'm just really busy or taxed or stressed and need children's literature to just escape in. And so occasionally I, I, I get books like this, you know, that I, I, I would see like The Hobbit as a book like that, or The Little Prince, which I, both of which I have read, uh, but anyway, Phantom Tollbooth. And then I found a really unexpected book. This is Why New Orleans Matters by Tom Piazza. And now I actually visited, visited New Orleans at the beginning of 2020, literally a few weeks before the pandemic really kick in, kicked into high gear. And I was just enchanted by New Orleans as a city, you know, it's just saturated with music, it has a really interesting architectural style, uh, I found a couple of great e e bookstores there that I bought books from, and so I was just enchanted with the city, and so when I saw a book about it, I said, well, why not? Um, I think this is part of a series. Uh, of books that are, that are like why blank matters, and I think I think there's one about Homer, why Homer matters, uh, why Bob Dylan matters, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's I think a part of a, a series I about, put out by Harper Collins. Uh, yeah, and I don't I don't know anything about the author or anything like that. I just saw a New Orleans book and grabbed that. Uh, and next one is a classic, one that uh, also comes recommended by some friend and which sounds right up my alley. This is uh, Angle of Repose by Wallace Stegner, which won uh, the Pulitzer Prize and which is, as I understand it, you know, steeped in uh, the American West, uh, much like Willa Cather's work. And that is always up my alley because I love reading about the American West. And yeah, it's a big, a big uh, work of literary fiction. I And a lot of people have recommended it. I know it's a favorite of a lot of people. So. Uh, yeah, and it's a lovely edition, isn't it? Doesn't, isn't that just a lovely edition? You know, uh, and it's really nice, like, physically wet, too. You can sort of flop the pages open without breaking the spine. Uh, it's just a really nice edition that I found. So, there's that. And then this next one is uh, one I've already read and snagged because it was a great edition of a book that I really like. This is a narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. By Frederick Douglass, obviously, and uh, yeah, this is a Barnes and Noble hardcover edition. Uh, again, really, really nice, uh, and I have read this, and I really love it. I love the writing. I love, uh, well, I mean, it's. I, I think it's important read. Uh, you know, just the subject matter and the way that he talks about it. Um, but it is also just um, kind of a testament to the power of reading in a way too, because so much of uh, so much of what he writes about is about him, you know, learning how to read, finding literature. And I really like that part of the book. And then there's the part of the book about slavery, which is obviously very important. And this was a, 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 a timely read for me, too, because I'm actually going to be buddy reading a recent biography of Frederick Douglass. Uh, over the summer, at some point, I'm going to be buddy reading it with Patrice Jones and Peg, Peg of the History Shelf. So I might reread this before or during that buddy read. So anyway. That's Frederick Douglass. And then another Pulitzer Prize winner, in interestingly. Uh, this is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Uh, his sort of uh, alternate history book, uh, imagining the Underground Railroad from the 19th century as an actual railroad. And I thought that, so I've heard good things about this, but a, a large part of what drew me to, buy, to grabbing it when I saw it was that I'm trying to read science fiction this year and this sounds like a science fiction novel, even if maybe it's not billed as a science fiction novel. I feel like it basically sounds like a science fiction novel because it is, you know, alternate history. So I snagged it, and I've also just heard good things about it. So 
there's that, and then I have a, a final set of three books that I grabbed at a, a thrift store yesterday. First one is another science fiction book. This is The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. Uh, incidentally, another work of uh, uh, alternate history in which uh, the, the, the Axis powers won World War II, and so it imagines the world that uh, occurs after that. Uh, but Phil K. Dick is just one of those classic science fiction authors that you hear about a lot. I really want to read his novel, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Uh, because it's the basis for one of my favorite films, Blade Runner. Uh, but this sounds really interesting. Uh, he won a lot of awards for it, he won a lot of acclaim for it, and it is, again, a lovely addition. I just love that cover. I mean, it's so, it's minimalist, but, uh, I, I, I love minimalist covers, so, anyway, I, I yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, another classic, this is The Tain, uh, from the, ep uh, so this is translated by Thomas Kinsella. This is a, an Irish epic poem, or I don't know if it's a poem, but anyway, it's an epic, uh, with a lot of, uh, Irish myths and legends and such. Uh, and it's one I've wanted to read for a long time, and I think Brian from Bookish actually reviewed, uh, Thomas Kinsella's translation at one point, and had some good things to say. So, anyway, I was excited to find that. And then, uh, lastly, I have a, uh, another piece of non-fiction that I wanted to read for a long time. This is uh, Behind the Beautiful Forevers, Life, Death, and Hope in a Mumbai Undercity by Catherine Boo. Uh, and, yeah, this just follows several uh, people, several extremely uh, impoverished people living in a, in a Mumbai Undercity <laughs> in India. And, yeah, I actually encountered it for the first time uh, through the Green Brothers, John and Hank Green, they did sort of kind of a read-along in, in their, on their channels way back in the day, uh, and got me really interested in reading the book, and I just hadn't found a copy to read yet, and now I have a copy, so that's great. Uh, so, anyway, that's my haul. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you've read the, any of these books, if you have thoughts, uh, and uh, we'll leave it, I'll leave it at that. Bye.